It's that time again. On Top and Hot is airing with your favorite host, John Zadar. It is Wednesday, folks, July 13th. Now, over here, we have some fresh and current news scrolling by with the oldest at the top, newest at the bottom. This is news I've picked out because it caught my interest. I'm not trying to promote anything. There's a lot of news out there, and I obviously couldn't post it all anyways. But if you haven't seen any of it, that's some of it, and some is better than none, right? For the rest of the show, we're going to be focusing in on penny stocks and OTC stocks. Now, penny stocks can be any stock on any market if they're under 5 bucks. So we could easily be looking at a stock on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Now, right now, we're over at the otcmarkets.com website. It's my go-to site when I do research on OTC stocks. For one reason, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. With all that pertinent information we're constantly looking for. So why are we constantly searching over Google when you can just come here and find it the first time you see it? Much easier. Much easier. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at how the OTC markets finished today. We're going to go ahead and refresh this. Make sure we've got current numbers up there. Do, 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 do. There they are. Ah. All right, so we finished dollar volume today up. We were at 1.7 billion yesterday. Our average is 2.1. So we are close to it. But to be honest, I really don't believe that the dollar volume has a whole lot of impact on how our market moves or reacts. It's just an accumulative number you can use with all these other numbers to figure out the average price of a stock. It gives you an idea of where the market is leaning. Like yesterday, it was definitely leaning toward the triple zero stocks. Oh my God, they got so much activity. And to tell you the truth, from what I saw, today was pretty much the same sort of day. Today, we finished at 13.1 billion, which is a really nice number. We started off the week at 9 billion and we had fallen under 10 billion last week. We had been climbing after a year fall. We climbed for 10 days. Then we took a dip and went sideways, and right now we're climbing again. But yesterday was outstanding. We had 19.2 billion, and during our show, it jumped up to 20 billion. However, in saying that, we also noticed that there was four companies between them had over 7 billion shares. Just four companies. And those four companies took us to a 52-week high on OTC share volume. Just four out of 12,500 companies. So imagine if a bunch of companies started getting some excitement and shares started being sold like this. And today was another sort of day like that. So we are seeing a trend. And that's pretty much what we're going to take a look at today. We're going to come over here to the current market link. I really love this page. I use this page for so much. Not this page particularly. This is the doorway. This is the foyer to get in. This is a list of the most active stocks and a lot of different ways you can look at it. And they break it down, advancers and decliners. We're going to look at the advancers. I want to look at all of them, but you could look at just stocks over a nickel or over a dollar. But, you know, we want to see everything because we're looking for a trend in the market. And then I open this up and the whole page just becomes advancers. Now I'm going to go ahead and split this page and bring up a chart too so we don't have to bounce back and forth. And we're just going to go look at the stocks that were predominant, whether they had strong volume, high price gains, or a lot of trades, or all three. Tick, tick, tick. And we're going to see where the market is got their head right now. Because remember, if we want to play, you have to go to where the kids are. That's how you play is with others. So we're going to find out where the park is by looking at the map. Hold on. All right, shuffled things around. I do believe we can work like this. Had to find a spot to put myself. Not that I have to be in the picture, but I found a little spot here where I really don't block any of the important information. So this is my favorite page, folks. This page, the only problem with it is it has a 15-minute delay, but it's absolutely free. You don't have to sign in or anything. Just come on over here to the OTC markets, go through that link, and voila, you're over here looking at these. So this keeps a tally 
through the day of the stocks. Now, I particularly come over here looking for stocks getting the highest number of trades. Doesn't that make sense? The stock that's getting the most trades probably has a lot of people. I mean, come on, we see one here with 242 trades. We don't think that's one person. We don't think it's 10 people. We, you know, in our mind, we figure there's a couple hundred people there. At least a hundred, just cut it in half. But I mean, seriously. So I look for these. Now, of course, early in the morning, you don't get huge numbers. But as you can see, looking through here, most of these are single digits, right? So anything that hits a double digit early is a potential runner for the day. So we are going to look at these and I've already gone ahead and highlighted a bunch of these. Now this is an order of percentage gains. This is every single stock on the OTC market, all 12,500 plus of them on this list. The double diamonds are expert market. We're not going to worry about those. They've been pulled off the open market for one reason or another. We can't buy them or sell them for the most part. So we don't concern ourselves with them. Now, the ones I've highlighted in yellow, first off, are triple zeros. These are stocks that are all in the triple zeros, and I want you to notice most of them are the low triple zeros, not triple zero eight or nine. I've also highlighted the volume. Huge volume on these are being sold. And I'm also highlighting the trades when it's over 50. I consider that the basement, 50. Now that's at the end of the day. We are looking at a tally at the end of the day. So you can see exactly where everybody's head was in the market, just through this page. So right here, and here's your ticker. There's a lot of information you're gonna see here, and I'm only gonna point out some. So if you see some information here, take advantage of it. You're watching this live, well, as close to live as you can. So you can pause it and you can get the information. So we've got RNVA here, another triple with a huge number of shares being done and a huge number of trades. If you know anything about this company, it really doesn't go anywhere. It sits down here. We really don't look at triple zeros because they don't have a whole lot going on most of the time, not in their price and not in their business. Blue one. This one popped up at the end of the day. 49, let me see, I don't even want one to refresh this because I'm afraid I'm going to lose my, uh, hold on, let's jump over here. Uh, what was that ticker? That was ticker CBDHF. Let's see if we can find that here. F, CBDHF. There it is. So she finished the day with 49 trades, 121%, and this one is just under a dime. Now, I noticed this stock. It jumped out on my scanner over here. I have this scan up normally through the day. And let me see, see there's two pages, so I can't even see a full scan. It's either from Z up or A down. That's the alphabetical order, and then they put them in, in the number order for me. But I did see that run around 2.15, 2.30, it started running. And I did jump into it to see if I could find the reason and everything I looked at over here, CBDHF is Hemp Fusion Wellness. Uh, they finished 121%. They're pink limited, which means they're late on their filings, but they are looking good. They've got a verified profile, transfer agent, and independent directors. Only reason you need independent directors is if you're uplisting. Well, they're in the pink zone, so they've got nowhere to go but up. Well, if they don't get their filings in soon enough, they will go down. They'll be thrown onto the expert market, that timeout, those double diamonds we were just looking at. And they've only got so much time. If you see grace period show up here, that's a 15-day countdown. You want to know about that countdown? Just come over here to the quote page, and it's right here. Proprietary quote, and it'll say right there, grace period, and the last day it is. Uh, what was their volume today, considering it really didn't pick up, or <laughs> didn't pick up at all? 100,000 dropped to 23,000, but still had 121% gains. I don't believe there was any news today. That's two weeks ago. Anything brought in? That's two weeks ago. Disclosures? No, that's since March. That is their financials, and there's nothing new down here. So what I would do... Under normal circumstances, since I'm looking at it, I would come over here and I would go to Twitter and I would ask Twitter what they know about this stock. You know, that's the shortcut. It's not that I'm going to take this information for gospel. 
but it's a good lead. It'll save me from having to look into 100 closets to find something to consider. So we'll put that up there and see what we get. All right, that's May 27th, 21. Wow, these are all old. Um, let's see under latest. Latest is the most current. July 9th, Hemfusion received CTO. Certificate, I'm not quite sure. There is not a whole lot going on here. Not much at all. And let's see if we go back to it. Uh, what was the most current piece of news we had? Let's see what they say. Um, a leading health and wellness company offering probiotic supplements and products containing CBD provides an update. Doesn't look like anything big going on here, folks. So that was my point. I could find no reason why this was running. No reason at all, but there you go. It jumped 121%. Let's take a look at that chart real quick. Doesn't hurt since we're right here, right? CA, oh, I forgot the ticker. They just couldn't use hemp fusion, could they? CBD hemp fusion. See, CBD hemp fusion. I can remember that. Very clever of them, very clever. All right, so there's our five minutes. She's been flat, flat, flat until halfway through today. Halfway to today, she got over that 200 and took off. Did take a big jump. How high did she get from, well, let's see. She opened up the day here at uh, just over four cents and got two 10 cents. So you're looking at 150% gains at her high. And then she fell back to, uh, well, no, she came right. Well, that's pretty decent. It looks like she fell, but she is right there, folks. She's right there up at the top, 9.9, nine, right underneath that. So she is sitting on her high right now. That's unbelievable. Let's take a look at the one minute. Yep, sure is. Bingo. Sitting right up there. Technicals are still up, up in the air. We are not in the overbought yet, but she's pointing towards it. Things actually look good without a catalyst. There's nothing really to say about this except that she took off and is running. Now, let's just take a four-hour glance just to see what she's been up to. Downhill run all this time. And this is the first serious break she's had. I mean, she's had rolls here. She had a small spike here, but not since six months ago as she had a serious attempt to get over the 200. This is a serious attempt. Technicals look real strong. We'll have to see if any news follows in. Maybe if there's a press release tomorrow or a tweet that just comes in perfectly timed, we may get a nice huge jump out of this. What else we got going? These are more trip zeros. Trip zero two, 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 one, two. See how cheap they are and see how many shares they're selling. These are all millions. Look around the neighborhood here, folks. These are stocks in the pennies and they're only selling thousands. Just thousands. So the trip zeros are definitely boss. They are getting a lot of attention. And you can't give a lot of credence to the gains. All they did was go up from double zero one to two. That's 100%. And as soon as it falls, well, you've lost 50% just that fast. Um, another one here I have not looked at. This popped up here at the end of the day, as far as I can tell, because I haven't seen it all through the day. 128 trades, almost a million shares, which is kind of where I like to draw the line. However, if you're hunting, you want to find something that maybe has 451. You know, something that's jumped, but isn't quite to a million yet. It's just warming its engine up. That's really getting in early. So let's take a look here at GXGY. Finished at 17 cents. Which one are you? Right there. Nope, it's actually higher than that now. Finished at 20 cents with 127% gains. Pink current, verified profile, and transfer agent. Looks real good. So she really jumped. She went from 33,000 to a million. I don't know. Is that like 100 times, 300 times? I don't know. That, that's a huge jump. Share structure. We got a small float. 12 million in the float. Company is making some money, but they're spending as much as they're making. Nothing to brag about there. Uh, quarterly report, ah, they did just have one come out a week ago. So there is some information there, but we don't have any filing. So this might be part of the reason, but let's check the news. Nothing since March there. All right, so that's all we got here. Again, you know, you can come over here to uh, Twitter 
toss it in, you know, just to give a, a quick sweep. Let a thousand eyeballs tell you if they found anything. Wow, one million volume and 100K. All right, micro floats. That's true. It is a very super small float. And I'll tell you what, they like to watch micro floats on Twitter. You will see them talk about that more than anything else until the chart sets up. Let's see what that chart does look like. GXXY is it? GXXY. Galaxy it is, a galaxy. All right, I think I've got it right. Let's just make sure before I, GXXY, <laughs> okay. Just wanna make sure we're looking at the right chart. So let's, that's the four hour, right? That is, that's a whole six month and she's actually had a good upswing here. Is that right? That is, that's the four hour chart, but how far back does that go? It doesn't look like far. That's going back only uh, three months. All right, so that's three months. I don't know why. I don't know what the deal is, but you can see even her technicals just started here in this point. So she has hit a low here of uh, about three and a half cents, got up to 14 cents. Whoa, I didn't expect that. That's over 400% jump. She came all the way back down here to a low of four and a half cents and is now up to 20 cents. And I, I think that's, if I go back a year, I don't think I'm going to see anything more. No. So she's at a new high. Now, maybe she fell off of the NASDAQ or I don't know, changed her ticker and there's more history, but this is all we can see on this ticker. And it looks like it still wants to climb. For what reason? Well, maybe it's in that filing. That filing may have something in it. All right, so what are we down to here? That was 88%. Now, this is one I keep reminding you about over and over again. Not that I'm shoving it down your throat. It's just that I realize these are trend stocks, and I can't explain why. I'm just saying, every time the apple falls, it falls down. <laughs> and that's all I can say. I don't know why it falls down. I haven't found gravity yet. I just see it fall. And every time you see a stock with a Q, well, not every, but virtually all of them, especially after four letters, the last letter represents bankruptcy. And a lot of these companies are coming down off of the NASDAQ. They're tumbling down here to the NASDAQ because they've gone bankrupt. And whatever reason, they run. Now, the fact of the matter is a bankruptcy is going to take some time. They're going to have to tear it down to rebuild it up, blah, blah, blah. It takes time. And most investors on the OTC don't like to hang around for long periods of time. So it is going to fall. Literally, it'll get pennies on the dollars if it isn't there already. But it can go sub-penny down here, right? Absolutely. So when they come on, for some reason, they run. And they become these little meme stocks for some oddball reason. They think getting them now is the best time where you can get some profits right now playing these bankruptcies, but don't buy them now for the recovery. No, most of them are going to fall a lot lower and you're going to be able to buy them cheaper in three months, cheaper than you thought. And then hang on to them for three, six months. Company comes back, you are getting dollars on your pennies. So that is what Elm WQ is. Now, actually, this one is a warrant. Elm is Electric Last Mile. They're an electric vehicle company. And this is a bankruptcy, but that is the warrant for it. The warrant is running mostly more than the stock itself. They run tandem, and they're both down here on the OTC market. You don't normally get to get warrants on the OTC market. So these are warrants down here, and this was at uh, three cents today, jumped 81%. Now here's the thing. You're not going to get a huge number of trades on warrants because they're not, I mean, they are stocks, but most people don't think of warrants as stocks. They see them as warrants first and not stocks, so they don't trade them as often as they can. But the people that want those warrants, boy, they'll come in and buy them up. And, you know, they'll, they'll see a price of three cents, but to them, it's easily worth six cents. Easy peasy. And you'll see this thing move very, very quickly. And you'll see them jump hundreds of percent sometimes without any forewarning. Boop! But if the company has good news, you'll normally see a warrant go up. But it's in bankruptcy too. In either case, there's 81% gains. And it did, oh, just under half a million shares. Here's another bankruptcy. Enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, oh, I can't remember what Enjoy does. Goodness. Oh, they work with mobile telecom businesses. Whatever that means. I was trying to figure out what mobile telecom businesses is. They help a lot of companies with it. But whatever it is, that's what they do. 
and they were on the NASDAQ and just came down, I think it was on the 11th. Yep, they just landed on the OTC on the 11th. It is the new kid on the block that has gone bankrupt from the NASDAQ. And I brought this up multiple times in the last couple of days, both days probably, because, well, it's going to get silly gains that we can't explain. And today it's up 60% with 2.6 million. Look at that, 720 trades. People are pushing the price up when it's just starting its bankruptcy. It's like starting a divorce. Is it ever good at the beginning of a divorce? I mean, maybe it's better at the end, maybe, but definitely not at the beginning. But these are running at the beginning. Here's another trip. And before I went too fast there, we do have a couple here that have a million. This is a double zero SMCE, which I do believe was in the news today, and SMEV. I'll tell you what coincidence or what? I have noticed a lot of stocks with the first two letters SM, blah, blah, running. SMEV, SMCE, SMKG, SMDE, I believe it is. It may be ED, but I mean in the last four days, all these SM stocks and all these stocks that have the word smart in them. I don't know why. It's just, you, you look for trends. You, you look for things that repeat themselves over and over. And you don't have to explain why they're happening. You just recognize it. You know, I can tell you that news has probably come out in China if I see a bunch of Chinese stocks running. It just kind of fits. But even if you don't understand, you don't have to know why the currents go in that direction. You just know which way the current's going and that's the way you plan your trip. So we got another triple down here. Triple zero three, a low triple. Uh, half a billion shares, 169 shares. Bring your own canteen. I don't know what it stands for. That's B-Y-O-C. Any of these stocks are worth considering. If people are throwing their money at them, there may be good reason, but they just may be cheap. I don't know where the people's heads are at. I just know where their trading is at. I can see the activity here. All right, so we got a big gap right there. No millions, not even a half a million. We don't have any over 50, and we've dropped from 50 down to 42. Here's our first one, JTBK. It is over a penny, just going over a penny right now. You see there, 1.42 cents. It started the day at a penny. So that 0.42 it gained today was a whole 42% gain. That little itty bitty less than a half a penny movement was a Virtually a 50% gain. 25 million shares with 861 people around this stock. Now, there was good reason why this stock moved today. Matter of fact, I've got it up here already. They had news today. Now, we'll look at the news and then we'll look at some details about it. Now, the news is a little chintzy if you ask me. I think he took advantage. It's real general. I mean, for all that I've got yellow there he basically says me and this unnamed other company are considering a transaction the assets of the other company are a billion dollars and then he says but i want to caution readers nothing is binding currently and very possible deal may not be reached so you got that jet black is currently in two other negotiations which are potentially smaller transaction the company plans to update the, the developments as they occur. Well, that number right there, folks, a million. You know, people can extrapolate and come to their own conclusions. And this is what I say, make stocks run. Stip uh, speculation. Speculation is their imagination. You know, when we meet somebody and we like them, we think the best of them. We build them up. We do the same thing with stocks. We think it's more than it's really going to be. And most of the time, you'll get general news like this, which will get a huge run. And then when he actually tells you what it is he's doing, blip, just a hiccup. And it's like, ah, I thought there was going to be this huge bounce. No, because there's no mystery involved. You know, people were investing in Tesla before Tesla was big. They believed in the man. They believed in his dream. Boy, they were almost a cult. You just couldn't stop them. And when people believe in something, they invest in it. And what they believe in most is their own opinions, their own thoughts. So when you give them a little bit to work with, they'll really build that up. And I think that's what happened here. So what was the uh, relative volume around the company? Not a bad jump, 165,000 to 25 million. Huge attention. 
Share structure, we got a little float. Well, it's not bad. It's 89, let's call it 90 million. I mean, I'm not gonna jump up and down, but that's not bad, 90 million. Company making any money? Uh, no, no, and I don't see shell risk up here. How about the last quarter? Maybe they got something. Uh, a dollar, <laughs> a dollar in the last year. Maybe they had to make one dollar a year just to not fall into a category. I don't know, so that don't look good, does it? And disclosures, uh, back in May, and that's it. So we got nothing there, just that one piece of news. And just so we can take a look to see if there was anything else, uh, no, a month ago they had another corporate update, and I have no clue what that one was about. But let's go take a look at Jet Black, right? Uh, that is JTBK. JTBK. All right, that is a five minute, kind of looks like the last four hour. All right, that's our four hour chart right there. So we had a high right here. I'm gonna draw a line there. Not with that one, that was gonna be my timeline. Let me grab my money line as I like to refer to it. And we'll toss that right there. So she's already broke that high. Boink, way above it. As a matter of fact, there's your high bubble of 2.3 cents. You can see right about in here was a happy median. You know, she came down and, and the 200 pretty much is there. Yeah, I kind of drew it right on top. Today is pretty much the only day she's had strong volume, strong technicals. We don't see anything was developing at all. Just that piece of news which gave people hope. I just jumped down to the five minute. You can see she was flat, even hit a low bubble two days ago of 007. And today she's at uh, just under two and a half cents. Well, think of it as from seven to 23. So you're looking at 300% difference between one, two, three, four days ago. In the last four days, that's risen 300%, actually more. And she's now come all the way back down here to a nice number of 1.4 cents. I always tell you to buy on the penny because as soon as it hits 2 cents, that's 100% gains. Think about that. If you buy it at 4 cents, it's got to go 4 digits. It's got to go all the way to the 8. That's a long wait. You bought it at the 1, as soon as it hits 2, you've made 100%. Hits 3, you've made 200%. Hits 4, you've made 300%. You know, if you're trying to hit 300% buying at four, it's got to go all the way up to the next zero plus two. So that is a long ways to go. That's why I always get excited when I see a price down here on the OTC market, even on the NASDAQ. I don't care where it is. Double zero one, single zero one. I ain't interested in those triple zero ones. You can let those go on by. So this could end up being something on the next press release. If he knows how to play people like this, we may see another bounce on it, but I don't think it's gonna run any more myself, but what do I know? So that was that runner, had a huge amount of attention on it. So you may wanna look at it tomorrow. It could have a lot more attention. Again, look at how small the numbers are. We're down to 35%. And there is the, uh, Bankruptcy that we were talking about up here. I believe it was the warrant. Oh, they've just repeated it. That's the same one. I don't know why it's there twice. Yeah, okay, so there it is again. It's that important. They didn't want you to miss it either. You know, I didn't put it up there. More trips. We have trip 04, trip 04. Ooh, and a trip 07. Finally one above the five. This is Marijuana Company of America. I do believe this is the very first first marijuana company that was listed on the open markets in America. They've got a lot going on for them. They really do. I don't know why they're down at this price, just showing no respect. They're getting no respect at all. They did under a quarter million shares, but they had 239 people around them. Uh, GTLL, this has been a hot stock before. It has fallen hard. It's down to that triple zero. Seven million with 25. Definitely not a high number. Ooh. 908, wow, almost a 1,000 people. Cruzani, that's right, C-Z-N-I, Cruzani. They just did a reverse merger on the 29th of June. Actually, that's when it was completed, believe it or not, with a company called, called Baumo. Baumo is a artificial intelligent recruitment center. They, hold on, folks, I got to turn this off. It's been blipping you to death. There you go. Uh, they're an automated a artificial intelligence recruitment center. They help businesses find employees with a lot of strange, 
in real time situations. You know, you want to talk to someone via live video. Uh, you know, they got a lot going on. But that was on the 29th. And it's new management, new business. The thing here is, is that Baumo was a private company. They are now going public because they're on the market now. But we don't know what they're worth because you don't publicize private records for a private company. So until they publicize that, we really don't know what they're worth. So this is probably going to run when we get some good hard stats about this new company. But right now, it is not doing a whole heck of a lot. Um, I was on the wrong page, wasn't I? We were yeah, yeah, no, that's the right page. Sorry, I had a lot going on there for a second. But look, 1.2 billion shares. Now I think the other day she did a billion shares, but in either case, it is still getting a lot of attention. It may not be moving, and I've said this before: triple zero stocks can do a billion shares and not move their price. Because it'll just go from six to seven to six to seven to six to seven and just keep going along unless it gets a catalyst and this has had a catalyst it just hasn't gotten the respect it deserves for it because of all the market sentiment going on right now but i think once somebody kicks a can and any information comes out about cruzani this baby's going to cruise down the road i'm holding it just so everybody knows i had this over a year ago and I got it at not a bad price. Uh, I got it just a wee bit over double zero one. And I did average down just the other day because I thought it was ready to go. The charts were looking good. Right now, you know what I think it is? Lots of competition with cheaper stocks. Cheaper stocks. Now here's, these were triple zeros. Right now they're double zero one, just over the one. Double zero one. It just got out of the triple zeros. It is the gain it made today that broke it free and got away. <laughs> Ecox and BRYYF. And I don't know if either one of these have news or if they're just running because of their price. A uh, quarter million and 19 million. But you can see 56 and 150 trades. We're down to 24% now, folks. E-E-E-N-F keeps jumping up. I've seen it here before. This was a triple zero today. It isn't anymore. 100 million shares, 793. I got to tell you, folks, I have not seen a lot of stocks lately that have over 500 trades. And we got quite a few of them here. Quite a few of them indeed. And you can see all the yellows are triple zero stocks. Now, I make a big deal about that because over the last, oh, I don't know, I have definitely noticed over the last 30 days, they've been getting no love, no attention at all. And these are stocks that a lot of people on Twitter talk about because there's normally not a lot of news going on. There's not a lot of action, but they are slowly inching around, moving like a snail. And at some point, the snail gets right on an edge and looks like it's going to fall over. And that's when everybody wants to see it, just before the geyser explodes. You know, we're all watching it. And that's what people do on Twitter. They do watch the technicals on these stocks. And they'll start to talk about a technical that looks primed to jump, even though there is no other catalyst. The stock is a triple zero, maybe has nothing going on here recently or lately. And still, because so many people hold these stocks, because there's a lot of them out there normally, they will run just on the technicals. And right now, they're getting a lot of love. So that's as far down as I went, folks. We're all the way down to 22%. But I'm just going to go here slowly, and you can see we did not have like thousands and thousands. I mean, if I was to take a guess here, I'd say maybe we looked at... Uh, 250 300 stocks at the most and to give you a better sense of that if we look at the scan right here this gives us let me see if this goes up or down there we go i've counted this before and that's 50. that is 50 stocks right there and this is a search from three dollars down to double zero one I don't put my trips in here because I just don't play them. So that's what we're looking at. And this is every stock under $3 on every market, all of them. And we go from 1,900%, the very top one, down to 26%. Out of all the stocks that could be under $3, that is 50 stocks. And that's how fast it dropped. Now, I do have to admit, 
TOS splits their search alphabetically from the letter A down and the letter Z up, and then they show it to you in the numerical order. So I have to look at two different searches. But here we go again, 50. The very top one here is very, very high, 99,000, blah, 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 down to 26. Only 50 stocks deep. And I'm just trying to point out because I see this every day. That is not normal. No, folks, normally there are lots of 100 percenters here, even six, eight, nine. There's just a lot of heavy duty action. But as you can see, the high ones here that have 100%, none of them have strong volume. None of them. So it's really difficult to play a stock that isn't moving. You buy in, you sit around waiting for the next person to buy in. And that's not what makes anybody feel comfortable. And the worst part about no liquidity is it's difficult to actually second guess the direction, which is what we are doing when we are charting. When we're looking at that chart, we're trying to figure out where is it going to go. And if it only has motion every 13 minutes every two hours every two days when they turn the faucet on you have no idea how hard the pressure is going to be which direction it's going to go you just don't know anything because it can go any direction from a dead stop but when a stock has motion momentum it is moving forward it just can't you know well, I mean it can, but normally you're not going to get a fall off of an edge without warning of something going on. It has a directional biorhythm, if you will. And that's what we're always looking for with all the pressure gauges, which is really what these are, whether they be percentages or price, uh, volume. We're dealing with numbers that are all being calculated to determine pressure on the price. Is it coming down or going up? Is it light or is it heavy? And this is what we use it for. And each line gives you an indicator for the next line. Each bar gives you an indicator for the next bar. The more you know, the more you grow, right? So folks, this is where I like to come. You can come here starting at 10, 10 in the morning. There's not gonna be anything going on, but the market has been going for 20 minutes, but you're only gonna have about five to 10 minutes worth of information. Every time you come over to this page, you do have to go up into the upper corner and refresh the page. It doesn't just automatically refresh. And if you're following the market, you could be on this page all day, coming back and forth, jumping around. You have to refresh it to update this too. But this is my go-to. This is a great, now this is only OTC. It doesn't show NASDAQ, which is why I like my scans because the scans show me penny stocks on all the markets. As a matter of fact, while we're talking about that, I did pull up a couple. Let me see if we have one here. Um, this is OLB, O-L-B. Uh, her volume today, 11 million, 11 and a half million. She jumped from 82,000. That's a lot of volume, folks. She ended the day at $1.15 with 27% gains, and she's on the NASDAQ. Uh, share structure, probably won't get all the information. Well, look at that. How considerate of them, a NASDAQ stock. You see why I like to come here? I mean, you can start here. If, if it's right, it's right. If it's here, it's here. If it's not, then go to Google. But man, just start here. So a uh, NASDAQ stock over here at the OTC market, our float is under 9 million on this stock. News, did they have any news today because she was running? Mm, yeah, we do. OLB Group authorizes share repurchase program. They tell us here that they are going to buy 1 million shares of the outstanding. So let's go back to that share count. They have 14 million. I don't believe that's going to affect the float. The float will probably remain the same. Uh, they're buying out somebody or something. I don't know because they said the outstanding shares. Now it may affect the float. I don't think it will, but in either case, they're going to take a million off. So this will be down to 13.7 and anytime the share structure gets smaller, you're getting more value. I mean, the stock just gets more value the less there are. Think of it this way. How big of a piece of pie do you want? If there's 100 people, it's going to be a very thin slice. If there's only 10 people, it's much bigger. If there's only four of you, I don't know if you can finish it. And that's what we're doing here. We're giving you a bigger piece of pie. And that's the news. That's what's got it running right there. Let's see. Do we have another one? Um... We didn't look at this one, but this is one I keep reminding you about. This is THWWW. 
TH is a NASDAQ stock. They came out with news the other day that they had increased their revenue projections for this year, which means they've only got six months left. And they say that they are now going to be kicking it up to 505 with a maximum, I think, of uh, 575 or 590 million this year. Well, the stock is running, but this is its warrant. It's a lot cheaper. The NASDAQ stock, I don't know what the price is right now, but you know, as a penny stock trader, you want the cheaper version. But of course, you're not going to get the same volume on a warrant, as I was telling you, because there's just not a lot of people that pay attention to warrants. Let's see what the relative volume was on this today. Well, that's not bad. I mean, that's uh, 13 to 180. That's 14, 15 times roughly. So that is a huge increase. Uh, this jumped 42% today. Let's look at the chart. THWWW. All right, so there you go. I've been talking about this ever since the news. Since the news came out, which, uh, when was that news? I can jump over here and get it. When did that news come out? TH, uh, Energy Minute. You know, it must have been online because it sure doesn't look like it's right here. No, it doesn't. No, but it was a couple days ago. I do know that. And uh, shoot, I should have put my blue line in here. I normally put in a timeline so I know when I looked at it last. Let's back this out to the 20-day version. All right, so there we are growing. We had a low bubble just before she started to grow. I'm going to presume that bounce here is off the low bubble, and this is probably when the news came out, and she's been running ever since the news. So that sounds about right. Two days ago, that maybe even three days ago, it may have been here that I actually showed this to you. But we looked at the warrant. And I brought it up day after day because it's showing a trend. It is growing right now. You got to remember, a warrant is based on the value of the company. You would think a stock is. But the reason I say a warrant is, is because it's a coupon. Yeah, it's a stock. You trade it like anything else. But because you don't know any better. But it's also a warrant. You hold this. It's got an expiration date, maybe two, five years down the road, and it's going to allow you, the person that holds this stock warrant, to buy a share of stock, and I do believe it would be something like $11.50 any time after it's activated in the next five years. Now, there's normally a price like $18. When it hits $18 for 20 days in a row, ding, 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 your warrants become active and you're allowed to use them. So you take your warrant, and you take $11.50, you go buy a share of stock. But it's worth $18. Well, go sell it then. Get your profit right now. But it could be $30 or $100. Doesn't matter. You're going to pay $11.50 with that warrant you have. And how many did, did you buy? Oh my God, you got, you know, a thousand of them, 10,000 of them. And you say, but wait a minute, I can't come up with $10,000. Well, here's what you do. You know, you can take uh, two of them, with $22.50, go buy them, get your two shares. They're worth more, right? Sell them and you can go buy more. You're eating into your profit, but you can actually do it that way. I don't want to go into it, but I thought about it before. But that is what makes warrants worth their money. And the company just said they're worth more. I mean, you look at their financials right now. Look at their financials right now. We can do that. What are their financials right now? All right. Not bad, are they? No, not bad at all. But they said they're going to 505 million. Right now they're at 291. Now I don't know if that was 505 gross. Probably was probably gross, just like this number here. So they're gonna virtually double what they're doing right now, which means that it's worth twice as much, at least in the investors' minds, right? So this has been climbing strong. She was down here at 27 cents five days ago. She's now over $3. That's a thousand percent gain in one, two, three, four, five, six days since her low bubble. Now, as I said, this looks like she was bouncing off her low. And I'm pointing this out, folks, because this happens with a lot of warrants. Warrants do follow the company. When the company has good news, the warrant normally goes up with it. Not always, but normally. But warrants can approach low bubbles, and when they hit a low bubble, they get a big bounce. They just get a big bounce. As a matter of fact, let's take a look here. 
You can always tell a warrant because at the end of it will be a W, like this one right here. Let me pop this out. All right. If we click that one right there, that is a warrant. It hit a low bubble, right? Now, that's a five minute. I'll back it out to 20 days. Hit a low bubble. Was way up here. Fell super duper low. Hit a low bubble and has bounced back. And normally, they will come back to at least around the neighborhood they fell from. But a lot of them surpass it because they just do it so fast they overshoot uh here's another one right there up at the top of the list right this was very low uh it fell i don't know why they're showing it as a gainer right now that's on the one hour let's look at the five minute all right she didn't have any share volume 250 so like i said it's hit and miss with options or uh warrants but I'm pointing out here that each one of these that I'm showing you right now that have a W or a WS behind them are warrants. We are looking at all the gainers right now. So every single one of these made profit. Look at this, folks. There's only 50 stocks in this list, right? And all of those were warrants. And all of these are green. Now, of course... You want to find the ones that have the strongest volume. You want to go see if there's any news. See if something's going on. But you can also monitor each one of these. And you may want to go on the other end. You may want to go on this end, the red end, and find warrants on this end that have fallen and hit lows. Uh, let's see if we can find one. That one's got 4,000 shares. All right, see? This was super low here at a nickel. Had a small bounce and then surged. 500% gain. Boink, in 10 minutes, 500% gains, and then fell all the way back down to here. Now, chances are there was no news. Chances are. Chances are it was that low bubble. That's what low bubbles do on warrants because they're super cheap and have value to them because they're coupons that are going to be used later in the future. And people buy the coupons super duper cheap. They just scoop them up, you know? So when you see a low bubble on one of these warrants, Check it out. Now, when I say check it out, I mean go back and see. Is it rolling downhill? Because this was a low bubble. This was a low bubble. So it's not every low bubble. But if you have a warrant, and I don't know where one's at, but if you have a warrant that's going sideways like this right there, boom, it had a drop sideways, drop. Okay, after an abnormal deep drop, you can easily find these recovery. Of course, they need to line up to the SMAs. They got to have an opportunity, a window. And as soon as this got close, it jumped. And this particular one jumped from 13 cents up to 20 cents right there. So that, that was like 50% jump. And then look here. We had a low bubble just the other day and she took off. So you're looking for stocks that have more of a sideways trend and then have an abrupt drop. Could be over a few days, but then it has to start leveling off and see if it has a pattern of doing that. See if it jumps and falls, jumps and falls, jumps and falls and catch it on the low bubbles. And the warrants are something you can monitor. And as I said, most warrants are not on the OTC market. Virtually all of these are going to be on the NASDAQ. Uh, let me see. New York Stock Exchange. I mean to say the major exchanges. So these are going to be free to trade. You don't have to pay $4, $7, whatever it is you're paying for your OTC broker. You don't have any transaction fees, trading warrants. They don't cost you anything. So you can get in and out of them anytime you want for free. How about that? All right, folks. I think I have probably gone on long enough. You can see that our market has been leaning towards the cheaper stocks. One might actually say the more risky stocks. We're not only dealing with cheap stocks that don't move very fast, that sit around for long periods of time, normally don't have a lot of news, but they're also paying a lot of attention to bankruptcy stocks. Stocks we know are going to fall here in due time when they get deep into these bankruptcies. They just announced them. <laughs> Right? You don't throw a party when you say, I'm getting a divorce. I mean, maybe some people do, but <laughs> that's just the way it's going. So it looks like it is riskier stocks. Now, of course, there are some good legitimate headlines out there in stocks running on news. But right now, the market is leaning towards all of these cheaper stocks. And if you want to catch the current, that's where the current's at. 
Cruzani is one that could have a breakout if a nice piece of news comes out. She's on the upper end of the triple zeros. When she gets into the double zeros, like we saw a few of them break today, they actually got out of the triples and up. A lot of times they'll come back down. They test that because that's a mental block for an investor. Getting out of one zero, losing that zero. And also that buy price of one, double zero one, because it doubles and triples as it goes every digit up. People buy and buy and buy on that. Anyone who's selling on it is silly. I'll tell you what, you're silly for selling on a one. Because as soon as it hits two, you've got 100% gain. So why would you sell on the one? So the market is leaning towards risk. The market is leaning towards cheap. But the market is building up the volume. And that builds up everybody's self-esteem on the market. So hopefully we continue to see an increase here. I know we covered a lot of variety of information here. I hope some of it helped. I'm hoping that everything continues to grow and hopefully we have some big runners so that we can focus in on stocks. Until then, folks, remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.